Now, when we look at the Khawarij and how they developed, we find that not only did the Khawarij make takfir on the Sahaba, but they tried to kill the Sahaba. They tried to kill Hassan. They tried to kill Ali and Muawiyah radiallahu anhum. All of them in one attempt, three of them, assassins, with poisoned daggers that went out. And they fought Muawiyah radiallahu and they fought Ali radiallahu. Subhanallah. And they would, would make takfir on the Sahaba. They would say Ali is kafir and Muawiyah is kafir radiallahu Now, what do we see from their manhaj? One, that they make the blood of Muslims halal. So that's the first thing you have to look at. So if you want to look at a group of people and know whether they're khawarij or not, the first thing you look at, do they make the blood of Muslims halal or not? If there is a Muslim who kills somebody, I'm paying attention, and the Qadi orders capital punishment as a had for him from the hudud of Islam, does that mean that Qadi is khariji? Huh? No, because there is the true haq, that is what the Quran has ordered. Tayyib. What if there is a murtad? What if there is somebody who has done a criminal act that constitutes death? Then a qadi, not any individual of the street, but a qadi can fulfill that hudud. We cannot say this is wrong. That's not a kharij. But what if there is a Muslim and he makes a mistake or he commits a sin or he does something? Maybe he drinks alcohol. Can you kill him? No. I mean, just one time, he drank, you caught him, you can't kill him. There are hudud in sharia, but you cannot be like, no, he's drinking alcohol, he's alcohol, okay, kill him. No. Maybe he disagrees with you. Maybe you and him don't agree on something. Does that mean you can kill him? No. What if there's a kafir who's not fighting you? It is peace. Can you just kill him? No. Even a kafir. This is, and I'm not saying this afraid of any government. I'm saying this because I believe in this as a Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not ordained upon us to kill innocent women and children for no reason. And that's why I condemn those killings that kill innocent people without reason. Somebody is shopping for tomatoes in a marketplace and you blow up a bomb and you kill people. Why? What did they do? Oh, they'll go to Jannah. They die. Oh, they may go to Jannah, but you're going to the Nar then. Why do you want to send them to Jannah at the expense of you going to the Nar? Killing a Muslim? Hmm. Even a non-Muslim, if there are no Sharia reason, you cannot kill them. The Prophet ﷺ lived in Medina. Afterwards, not just in Medina, Afterwards, the Muslim Khilafah had Ahlul Dhimma. And they wrote books on Ahkam Ahlul Dhimma. How non-Muslims would live under the Islamic Khilafah in peace. And they were, if you look at the history of Islam, if you look at the people of Palestine, of Aqsa, of Quds, the non-Muslims of Jerusalem as it's called today, although it should be called Al-Quds, Jerusalem, we shouldn't use this word. It's the Hebrew word, it should be Al-Quds. The people of Al-Quds, they went to Umar bin Khattab and wanted to hand the city over to him without fighting. Because they saw how wonderful the, the people who were Christians and Jews were treated under the Islamic Khilafah. Read the books of history, read about Salman, uh, Salahuddin al-Ayyubi. And read what the non-Muslims said, how the... How Jews and Christians and their rights were protected under the Khilafah. Read about Andalus, Spain, and how the Muslims protected Christians and Jews and their rights to worship. 
read books like Ibn al-Qayyim's Ahkam Ahl al-Dhimma and how in the Sharia they even allowed non-Muslims to use their own religious laws for family matters and other things. A right we as Muslims don't have in the West. This was the beautiful peace that Islam brought and the Khilafah brought. And today, if we see people that say, just walk into a mall and, if, and, and just spray the place, shoot everybody. Where is this in Islam? Huh? There is Muslims in those malls. There are non-Muslims that have no problem with Muslims, that are not harming the Muslims, that are not fighting the Muslims. No, akhi. You have to be careful. That don't let it be, oh, but the end justifies the means. No, no. In Islam, al-wasail, huh, what was the usul in fiqh? Al-al-ahkam, al-maqasid. Al-maqasid. Al-al-ahkam, al-wasail. So if your wasail, if the way you're fighting is against the sharia, then nothing good will come out of it. You have to fight within the rules of the sharia. Because it's not upon you to bring results. It's upon you to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the results. Tayyib. Now, the khawarij, they split into many smaller sects. They were not just one sect. They had many smaller sects. Now the issue comes, were the khawarij kafir or not? And many ulema have explained this issue. As Sheikh Salih al fawzan and others, they said, you cannot make a blanket takfir on them. Because they were khawarij that had different ideologies. Some of them, they didn't consider all of the sahaba as kafir, but they felt that they did wrong and they wanted to fight them. And some of them actually considered them kafir. Some of them didn't believe in certain ayat of the Qur'an. Because even if they said they did, but in amalan they didn't. So you have to look at the particular sect and the hukum will be given. Some of them, they will be outside the fold of Islam. And some of them will still be in the fold of Islam. The Khawarij, as a group that was at that time, died out. Ali Radian who defeated them. But their methodology never died. And that's the thing with the 72 sects. The Murja and all of them will discuss. Even if them by that name in that time period die, that methodology comes back. And that's why when you see new sects like the Nation of Islam or Nation of Kufr or whatever, they are nothing new. They're just reincarnations of earlier sects. That's why you see people today, you know, wanting to make masajid with you know, people upon the way of Qawm al and this and that. This is nothing new. It's reincarnation of those earlier sects. And all of them will be in the Naar, as the Prophet ﷺ has told us. So, the Khawarij, this was their methodology. And this was their manhaj. What is the Aqeedah of Islam? Our Aqeedah is that all of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, not the Munafiqun like Abdullah ibn uh, Ubay ibn Salul and others who were known to be Munafiqun. The Prophet told us about them. Not them. But those Sahaba that were the companions of the Prophet Especially those that the Prophet gave the glad tidings of Jannah or gave their virtues. And all of the Ashab of Rasulullah were good. They were believers, they were the jama'ah, they are our role models, they are our examples and we respect and love them. Even when they had disagreements with each other, we love both of them. We love Muawiyah radiyallahu we love Ali radiyallahu we love Hassan Hussein radiyallahu anhuma, we love Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, we love Aisha radiyallahu anha, we love Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Tulha and Zubair. And Abu Ubaid bin Jarrah and Abdul Rahman bin Auf and Khalid bin Walid and all of the Sahaba, we love them and we respect them. I'll give you an example. Sometimes, maybe me and my friend who's my age may have an argument. 
We have a disagreement. But if my son goes and curses my friend, I'm going to slap my son. Why? Because I'm going to tell him that this was an argument between me and my friend who's elder to you. It wasn't your place to curse him. Maybe me and my wife have a discussion, an argument, but my son cannot come and curse or fight and argue with the parent because that's not his place. Tell you, maybe our Sahaba radiyallahu had disagreements, but they were all good. And it's not our place to say he was right and he was wrong and he should have done this and he should have done that. No. What happened? Allah ordained it. We know who were the best of Sahaba, as Ali radiyallahu mentioned the authentic hadith that the Sahaba radiyallahu considered Abu Bakr to be the best of them, and then Umar, and then Uthman. And because Ali radiyallahu was the one narrating the hadith, he said after them we were equal. But we know that after them it was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu. We love Hassan, we love Hussein, we love Ibn Abbas, we love Ibn Mas'ud, we love all of the Sahaba radiyallahu We as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we believe there are things that take one outside the fold of Islam. For example, Shirk, Al-Akbar, Kufr, Al-Mukaffara, Al-Bid'a, Al-Mukaffara. These things take one outside the fold of Islam. But we as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we believe that a sin in itself does not take one outside the fall of Islam. Some things can, like Tark of Salah. But that's a different issue. But if somebody commits a sin, even if it's a major sin, they become fasib, but not kafir. They can still go to Jannah if Allah forgives them, or they make tawbah, or they spend time in the Nar, they can still go to Jannah. This is the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Unlike the Khawarij. We believe in the sanctity of human life. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made human life protected. All of it. And it cannot be taken except bil haqq. And that's why we believe that the killing of innocent men, women, children, elders, is forbidden in Islam. Except when there is a shari justification for it, it's forbidden in Islam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to keep us on the right aqidah and to keep us away from takfir and the fitna of takfir and to keep us away from being murja and being lenient towards that and being harsh towards takfir and to keep us on the way of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And inshallah, that will end our dars today. Jazakumullah khair. Al-Kitab fatwa al-Mujrimin mushfiqin mimma fih Wa yaquluna ya waylatana maani aadha al-Kitab la yuadir sahiratan wa la kabiratan illa ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا